Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with Dr. Sagar Parikh. He's joining us here from the University of Michigan to talk about some results from SAGE and Biogen's Phase 3 Coral Study evaluating Zoranolone. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Dr. Parikh, thank you for joining us. Hello there. Nice to be here. Well, I mentioned that uh, you were joining us here from the University of Michigan. Give us a, a brief look into your professional background and talk briefly about your role at University of Michigan. Well, I'm a uh, professor of psychiatry here, <clears throat> as well as a professor in the School of Public Health. Um, I head the depression clinical and research program at the University of Michigan, where we're trying to find new ways to treat depression. Zoranolone, what exactly is that compound, and is it only indicated for that uh, specific disorder, or is it indicated for anything at this point? Well, it's a, it's a new compound. It has a, a relative or analog that is FDA-approved uh, for uh, the treatment of postpartum depression, and that's called Brexanolone. Uh, Zoranolone is a novel compound in that it works on a very common receptor in the brain known as the GABA receptor. Uh, GABA is actually the main inhibitory uh, uh, molecule within the brain. That is, it soothes you, it calms you down, it, uh, and activating it, um, it can, can calm fear, can improve depression or anxiety, uh, it can prevent seizures, and uh, it, as I mentioned, it's very widespread throughout the brain. So, you know, we've thought about traditional treatments for depression that work on our familiar friends, serotonin and dopamine and norepinephrine. This uh, molecule targets a different receptor, uh, the GABA receptor, and so represents a new way to treat depression. The phase three coral study, tell us about this study. What was the design? Um, how many were involved? And what were some of the, the key results? Right. So the coral study is a study to look at whether giving this new compound, Zoranolone, with a standard FDA-approved antidepressant at the same time, so starting both up front, will help accelerate and improve the response uh, for the treatment of depression. So this was a standard randomized controlled trial. Uh, it had a placebo, and it was conducted uh, across the United States, and 425 uh, individuals participated in the study. So the design was like this. People were uh, diagnosed with depression, taken off other medications and screened. And then once entered into this trial, they were started at the same time. All of them were started on one of five standard FDA approved antidepressants. And on the same day of starting that, they could be started on either by randomization, Zoranolone or placebo. So the two arms of the study are zoranolone plus a standard antidepressant versus placebo plus a standard antidepressant. The idea was to look at outcomes uh, quickly. So the primary outcome was how much better uh, or how much difference was there between the two arms at day three. The main secondary outcome was since the medication is only used for two weeks, how did people do? Um, in that two-week period, measuring the response to depression treatment at multiple time points, four time points across those two weeks, um, what were the differences between the two groups? And then there were a number of secondary outcomes because the study did continue out uh, to a full six weeks. Was there anything that really stood out for you as the results came in? Well, first of all, I thought that the study design was very helpful because in clinical practice, what we often do is when we have a tough case of depression, we have to add uh, medications. We've started with something, usually a standard antidepressant, and it's not doing the job fully. So we need a helper. We need something else. And, and so in everyday practice, it's quite common to be using two or maybe three medications at the same time. So what I liked about this design is it said, well, why not start up front with two medications and see if you do better than if you just start, start off with one standard antidepressant. 
Um, the other thing that was really impressive for me was that, you know, treating depression is a long game. It often takes multiple trials. It often involves waiting four weeks, eight weeks, occasionally up to 12 weeks to see a response. So if we could have a, a quick treatment, that really helps. And here, the primary outcome was three days. And here, the study was actually positive, showing the combination of zoranolone plus a standard antidepressant beat the standard antidepressant at day three and at multiple time points across the two-week period uh, of administration. And the other thing that was exciting for me is this is only a two-week treatment. You know, um, it, it works fast and you give it for two weeks and then you're done. So it's once a day for those two weeks? Yes, uh, there's a standard dose. Uh, so once a daily dosing, 50 milligrams, and uh, it's done across the two week period. Do you think this is going to drastically change the way that physicians think about and treat patients with MDD? Well, we're on the verge of a major change and that change refers to uh, not waiting forever for a, a treatment response. We've seen in the last uh, five to 10 years two or three examples of rapid acting antidepressants. The most impressive and most commonly known example of that is the use of IV ketamine, which works uh, often, you know, in, within a day or two in order to sustain the response. You usually need it uh, a couple of times a week for several weeks. Um, but the main thing is ketamine delivers a fast response. Uh, there's been recent research that shows uh, a very specialized form of brain stimulation known as transcranial magnetic stimulation administered multiple times per day in one week also pro produces very impressive results. So we're on the cusp of a paradigm shift. Let's get treatment done and done quickly and help the person quickly. So Zoran alone, uh, if it's approved by the FDA, will represent the first oral agent that produces quick results. And that would be fabulous, and that would be much needed. And I think, yes, that would be a, a major contribution to the paradigm shift. Was there anything that you'd like to add for our listeners? And is there some place that we can learn more about the study? Well, um, you know, I guess the, the natural question is, well, what about side effects? Um, was this medicine well tolerated? And the good news is it was pretty well tolerated. The common side effects are things that we are used to dealing with. They included things like nausea, sedation, um, dizziness, and any one of those symptoms did not occur in more than about 25% uh, of, of the sample. So in addition, there were no particular safety or uh, ex you know, serious adverse event signals so it didn't seem to generate uh, much in the way of concern that way. And I might add that this is one trial, you know, the, the coral study that we're talking about with 425 patients, but it's now been studied in several thousand patients across multiple studies. And the safety signal, uh, the tolerability signal is similar, and that is it's pretty safe and it's pretty easy uh, to handle. Where can we learn more? Well, um, you know, there have been several publications uh, on this compound, the most impressive publication was one that was in the New England Journal of Medicine um, and was actually a phase two study that first uh, really demonstrated how effective this medication could be. Um, the coral study, of course, has only been presented uh, in abstract so far, um, and the publication is still uh, forthcoming. Well, Dr. Parikh, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio this morning and lending us some of your time. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. My pleasure as well. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Sega Parikh. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download to SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.